my dear friends and brothers and sisters, it would be difficult for me not to speak about the saint which we celebrate. Usually, the Sunday sermon revolves around the gospel reading. And although the gospel reading which we read today was very relevant, especially in our day and age, in an age of consumerism and of secularism, in an age where we're always worrying about how we will bring more and more towards ourselves, in an age where we care more about our body than we care about our soul, in an age where we have deified health, we have made health a God and forgotten that the one true God is the healer of our bodies and our souls. And I say these few things in relation to the gospel reading which was read about a man who had plentiful in from his harvest and knocked down his, his, um, his stables, his, his warehouses, so he could bring, build bigger ones so that he could fit all his harvest in and keep it for himself. But, but the Lord God says and calls him a fool. You fool, he says. Tonight when your soul will ask for you, because tonight you will depart from your soul. You will die. Who will look after all these things and whose will they be? You've looked after everything in your life except the one important thing, and that is your soul. And that's why God calls him foolish. He's a fool. And we can say that this day and age is an age of foolishness because we do exactly the same thing and we can relate very much to this man in today's gospel reading. But apart from that, we have examples of how not to be like that, of how to be different, of how to be united with God, on how to trust God, on how to become holy through the grace of God, through the saints which we celebrate and the saint which we celebrate today, which is Saint Iacovos of Evia, a recent saint, added to the calendar of the saints only recently in the past few years. And very quickly, mind you, he was added to the calendar of the saints because his blessed repose was in 1991. Most of us were alive in the year 1991. He was born in the, 19, in the year 1920 in a place in a village called Livisi, which today is Asia Minor. And we know that that area, especially, was known for its devoutness to God. Very faithful people. He had a very holy upbringing by someone who marked his spiritual life, and that was his mother. Now, it is said that in, they remember his mother as she would pray. She would lift up her arms and turn towards the region of Cyprus. Even though the place is in Asia Minor, she would turn towards the mountains of Cyprus. Why? Because there is a very renowned and miraculous icon of the Mother of God in Cyprus, which was painted by the Apostle um, Luke. And that icon is named Our Lady of Gikos, Panagia to Giku, a very renowned icon. And when she wanted to pray for her children, she would turn facing the mountains of Cyprus and lift up her arms in prayer and say, My Panagia, Panagia to Kikumu, my Panagia, protect all the children of the world first and then mine also. A time came where these devout and faithful people were expelled from Asia Minor because they refused to renounce their faith, simply not because they were Greeks, but because they were Christians. And so by the Ottoman Turks, they were expelled in the year 1922 from Asia Minor and forced to leave and go to Greece motherland Greece and there they established themselves and the young Yakovos who was also a refugee with his family 
left and was with his family in this place in Greece, in Evia. There in Evia, he began to grow and be nurtured with the spiritual seeds that his mother would give him. But he was mostly attracted to the secret life of his mother. What was the secret life of his mother? When everyone would go to sleep at night, his mother would stay awake and she would go in front of the iconostasis, the icon corner where the vigil lamp burned and there she would raise her arms in prayer and stay there praying for hours on end and she would do countless prostrations one after the other praying. Small Yakovos, the young Yakovos, watched his mother and watched everything that she did. One day, he was inspired by a scene. Seeing while his mother was praying and the, the room only lit by the vigil lamp, in a sudden moment, the entire room being filled with light and this brilliant light filled and radiating around his mother. In the morning, he asked his mother, Mother, what was that light that was around you that I saw last night while you were praying? Obviously, God wanting to protect this woman and humility so that she would not fall into pride, said to him, I don't know what light you are speaking about. I didn't see any light. And this inspired Yakovaki to imitate his mother. So, once everyone would go to sleep, and then his mother would do her usual routine of praying, she, after midnight, would go to sleep. When his mother would go to sleep, the young Yakovos would get out of bed and go and imitate his mother by doing countless prostrations, many prostrations in praying to the very early hours of the morning. When this wasn't enough for him and when this could not fulfill him anymore, he would leave at night secretly from his family and go into the woods there where there was a chapel built dedicated to our Saint Paraskevi, the saint which we celebrate at this church and honor. And during the midnight hours and the early morning hours, he would pray there by himself. One day, and he had, this is the very time, the very first time he has a divine and heavenly vision. He had a vision of a lady who came and stood next to him and said to him, Young Yakovos, Yakovaki, they used to call him in Greek, Yakovaki, young Yakovos, tell me anything that you desire and I have been sent from God to grant it to you. The young Yakovos now, being small, but also being wise as well at the same time, asks, who are you? And she says, I am the protector of this home. I am the great martyr Paraskevim. And when hearing the name Saint Paraskevim, the young Yaakovos bows reverently and says to her in absolute wisdom and humility, you see, if it was any one of us, we would have asked for anything on the spot at that moment. But he says to her in humility and wisdom, My Saint Paraskevim, I am young and I still cannot think for myself. But let me go and ask my mother and I will come back tomorrow and I will tell you. So the young Yakovos after having this divine vision, goes to his mother. And when his mother wakes in the morning, he runs to tell her what happened in the night. His mother first being surprised and angry that he left in the midnight hours and in the danger of the woods, after she composed herself, said to her, my child, tonight when you go and when you see Saint Paraskevin, I want you to lift your hands like this and say, Saint Paraskevin, grant me, grant me not earthly blessings, 
but grant me a heavenly blessing. Like this. Many of us are concerned about what our children will do in this life and how they will be educated in this life and how they will have everything in this life and we want to give them everything. Homes, money, fortune, any earthly and material possessions and the best education. She didn't say any of these things to her son. She said, just open your arms and say, grant me a heavenly blessing. And so that evening when he went back to pray in the chapel of St. Baraskevin, and St. Baraskevin appears to him again, he runs to her and opens his arms just like his mother had said. And he says, my St. Baraskevin, I pray that you grant me a heavenly fortune, a heavenly blessing. And St. Baraskevin blesses the young child and says to him, I will grant you with the blessings of God, everything which is heavenly. People of this world, all types of people will come and visit you. Hundreds and thousands of people. People who are poor and people who are rich. People who are weak and people who are powerful. Rulers of this world will come to visit you and to seek your blessing. Lots of money, he says, will come into your possession into your hands but listen now he says just like you will receive it with one hand you will give it with your other hand to those who need and to charity and this is what exactly happened when the young Yaakovos was mature and grew and became the abbot of the monastery people from all around the world rich known unknown infamous and famous came to receive the blessing of this holy man still at a very young age the people revered him because of his piety inside his pocket he held a little book a little prayer book and when people were sick he would take out the prayer book because they would ask for his prayers and begin to read them prayers even though he didn't understand what he was reading sometimes people would ask for a prayer for health and he opened up the book and he would pray for a prayer for, for someone's field, someone's crops, for example. But because of his faith, the prayer was answered. One time, the priest's wife was in labor and she was having difficulty giving labor, giving birth. She was having a very difficult birth. And so the priest said, Call young Yakovos, call Yakovakin to come and pray for my wife. Imagine that, the priest of the village saying, call young Yakovos and tell him to come. And so the young Yakovos came and said to the priest, I can't go in there, he says. I'm a young boy. I'm too embarrassed. He says, you do as I tell you and go in there and pray over Presbytera. Pray for my wife that she delivers this baby. So the young Yaakovos went with his head bent down and went and stood in, a very, in the corner of the room and began praying. And only in a moment's time, as soon as he began praying, the presbytera, the priest's wife, gave birth to a young healthy boy and named him Yaakovos. Characteristically, he was known even, even until recently, he's still alive. He says, Saint Yaakovos gave birth to me. He would say, this man Evangelos. When he grew and came of age, he went to, his, to the army. And in the army, there, just like any other teenage man or, or young adults with the temptations of this world, they tried to persuade him to go to different places, to women. And they said to him, come with us. He says, as long as I have this prayer book with me, he goes, this is my, this is my companion. This is my woman, this is my, this is my comfort, and this is my hope. That's all I need. And even though he was respected by everyone, Holy Week came, and when the time for Holy Week came, the lieutenant gave him permission to leave the army barracks so that he could go to church for Holy Week. He says, we need someone to pray for us, so you have permission to go to church this week for Holy Week. 
when someone heard this, they weren't happy. And they said, huh. he goes, you got permission to leave for Holy Week. He says, and I'm stuck here. Just because with your, you're the religious one, I'm stuck here. I'm not going to see my family for Easter. I'm not going to see my fiance. And he says to him, tell me, he says, which days do you want to leave? And I will give them to you. And he says, well, Baska. He says, and since I'm going to go for Baska, he says, I might as well be there for the Epitaphios on Holy Friday. And if I'm going to go for the Epitaphios, I might as well go on Holy Thursday as well for the crucifixion. And he says, listen, he goes, you take my week. You go and I will stay in your place. And so as he did that act of love and he stayed and stayed away from church that week. And so anyone who knows what Holy Week is for a Christian, how difficult that is. He stayed and let the other person go in his place. When the night of Pascha came, as he stayed up during the midnight hours, he could hear the bells from the villages ringing. And so he says, at this point, he says, the Christians are chanting, Christ is risen, Christos Anesti. So he began to say many times, glory to your holy resurrection, O Christ. Glory to your holy resurrection, O Christ. Glory to your holy resurrection, O your Christ. And as he was praying this, all of the sudden, a light came and filled the entire area and him and he was filled with the grace of God and felt an inexp inexp inexpressible and indescribable joy. And so, we as Christians go to the church to receive the created light, the light which we receive as a flame. Yaakovos, Saint Yaakovos, gave up that created light for love and in return, he received the uncreated light of the Holy Trinity of God. Once he finished his time as a soldier, he knew that he had to go and renounce this world and become a monk. His desire was to go to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, to become a monk there because he had relatives there who were priests and monks there. But it was the will of God for him not to go there. As he left, he went to the closest monastery dedicated to St. David of Evia, the ascetic. And he says, before I leave for Jerusalem, I'll go and venerate at the monastery of St. David. He knocked on the door, and the door was opened by an elderly monk, an old monk. As he entered and went into the church to venerate, another monk that was in the church turned around and looked at him and said to him, how did you get into the church? St. Iacovo said, the elderly monk opened the door for me. He said, which elderly monk? It's only me in the monastery and another monk who's upstairs in his room sleeping. And then when he looked and he looked at the iconostasis, he saw next to Panagia the icon of St. David. And he said, that was the elderly monk that opened the door for me. And he took that as a sign for him to stay at the monastery of St. David. And that's where he stayed in absolute obedience until he became the abbot there of the monastery. The monastery at the time was not known to anyone, but through the prayers and the holiness of St. Iacovos, many people began to flock to the monastery and to venerate the relics of St. David. Many times it is known, he was known as the man who speaks with the saints, because not only did he speak with St. Saint, Saint David, he also spoke with St. John the Russian who was in the area of Evia, whose relics are in Evia as well. And they would speak to him and appear to him and guide him. And he spoke with such boldness before the saints. And he says, he says characteristically, one of the things that I remember him saying <clears throat> was <clears throat> in his older age, because people used to ask for him to take the relics of St. David down to the villages when they needed it especially when it wouldn't rain he would take the relics down but because he was getting advanced and old in age one day when they asked him to bring the relics down he said Yero, he's speaking to saint david now 
He says to him, Yero, old man. He says, you're old and I'm old and I can't walk anymore. But I'm going to take your relics up until that corner there. And as soon as we reach that corner, I want you to reign. And not just drops, he says. I want you to prove and to show with a, 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 a downpour and to drench all of us with rain. And you better listen to me. And so he took the relics and as soon as he reached the corner, it started pouring down rain. These and many other things St. Yaakovos did. He was able to help people, um, especially people who suffered from demonic um, attacks and mental illness. You see, even though he was a saint, he had discretion and he knew exactly how to deal with people with tenderness and with nurturing. Sometimes when they would take people to him to read exorcisms, he says, he's not possessed. He needs a doctor. He needs to be, he needs to be medicated. And other times, when they were possessed, he would read the exorcisms. Because a lot of us today do not want to have that discretion and not want to realize that, yes, mental illness does exist. It does exist. And it is evident amongst us. And we need to have to, um, discretion what's from the devil and what is a mental illness. He reposed on the feast day of the entrance of the mother of God. In other words, yesterday on the 21st of November. And he prepared his people for his holy repose, telling them that soon his end will come. And so, on the 21st of November, after he had celebrated the divine liturgy, he went in the confession room to receive a woman with conf for confession. And as she was saying her confession, at that moment, he stopped her and said, My lady, stop now and kneel and let us pray. Because we have been visited by the Mother of God, by Saint David and Saint John the Russian. And so they both knelt and prayed. And as he was kneeling in prayer there, Our Lady came and took his soul to the heavenly abodes. And there, our Saint Yaakovos went and joined his elder, Saint, um, Saint David, and his much-loved Saint John the Russian, and all the other saints there. And it was on the 21st of November that he reposed in the year 1990. And so, at his funeral, the people said it was not like a funeral, but an Easter celebration. When they took out his holy his coffin with his relics in it to go for burial, many people and there's actually a video which is which is circulating on YouTube as well of the funeral of Saint Iakovos, and you can watch it on YouTube. At the moment when they're taking his coffin for burial, people started to shout, "Ayios, Ayios!" A saint, a saint. And a lot of people didn't understand why, but a lot of people were shouting Ayos because at that moment, and you can see it in the video as well, you can hear people all of a sudden start to shout out Ayos, Ayos. Because at that moment, people said they saw him standing in spirit on top of his coffin and blessing the thousands and multitudes of people that were there at his funeral. And it gives you goosebumps when you see this moment during his funeral procession. And so, after his repose, he showed the signs of sanctity, appearing to many people, having and performing many miracles to people, and showing that he is not dead but alive amongst the saints. And so our ecumenical patriarch very quickly numbered him amongst the saints and rightly so we honor him and venerate him today not yesterday because it's the feast day of Banagia and so not to coincide with the feast day of Banagia our church celebrates him 
today on the 22nd of November. Brothers and sisters, may we all have the blessings and the prayers of Saint Iagos, but more so through his prayers, may we be granted the simplicity and the humility that he had, but also the courage and the patience to endure the difficulties of the Christian struggle in order to receive the grace of God and the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Δεν έχει κόμμα. Βάλε κόμμα, δηλαδή. Βάλε κόμμα. 
Το καπάκι